Hey, what is going on everyone? It is me, Mr. Mario, and yes, today we are doing a little tutorial at my sink. As you can see, I have a controller here, and I'm going to be showing you all how I clean my controllers. It's actually really easy to do. You don't even need uh, that much stuff. It's not even that expensive, and you're going to feel a lot better, or maybe you'll feel dirtier. I don't know, but anyways, all we're needing, we're going to first need the controller, so this really works on any controller, honestly. I've done it on plenty of systems but uh, this is a controller I think I probably paid like less than five bucks for it probably like a few months ago and it's been sitting in one of my drawers and I didn't really notice it until last night I pulled it out I was gonna play it uh, well like uh, play around with it use it a bit and everything cuz uh, I actually lost one of the buttons on here and I kinda um, use this button on another controller but then a few nights ago I ended up finding this under my desk so I popped it on and uh, I did not realize in case you can or can't see this button right here is nice and white the rest of the controller is all marked in and dirty and disgusting um yeah if you don't want to see the inside of this controller just like click away from this video because the inside is pretty gross this was not mine as i said i i don't even remember where i got it from but i got it from somewhere for like five dollars and yeah <laughs> anyways First off, you're going to need the controller of choice, so here uh, I'm using the Xbox 360 controller and I'm using a security screwdriver for this. Uh, in case you do not know, uh, the inside of these screws right here do have a little circular kind of peg, I want to say, on them. So you need to have a screwdriver that is not only a T8, but it has to be a T8H, which means that it has a little uh, indention right in the middle of it. So you can just pop open the controller. So you need the controller itself, you're going to need whatever tool you need to bust that controller apart. And then a few other things. First off, I just use dish soap, you know, nothing too bad with that. Uh, don't use it on the actual board, though. Don't do that. Uh, also, I have this old toothbrush that I use. Uh, I put electrical tape on here, not because the thing was broken in half, but just so I would know in case I am ever like to the point where for some reason I can't think properly and I need to brush my teeth here and I don't want to get my other toothbrush. If I look at this, I'll see the tape and I'll be like, that is red. Red means bad. Danny, don't put this in your mouth. So using a toothbrush for that, of course we're going to need water and everything. Then normally what I do is I keep just a red cup on the side here. I normally just put the buttons in there and everything and the screws so I don't lose them. But along with all that, we're also going to give them a little bath as well. But I'm going to be using 91% rubbing alcohol, which is pretty much what I use for everything. If you work on consoles and such, you need to have some good rubbing alcohol on hand. And uh, finally then, Q-tips. We can always keep those on hand as well. So have all that there. Let's go ahead put some of this stuff to the side here and we're gonna go ahead and start working on this so first off what I'm gonna do let's just put this stuff here I'm gonna start busting open this controller and uh, then I'll show you all the insides here Alright, so now that we have all the screws out, let's go ahead and bust open the controller. So again, this is a 361, whichever controller you're using, you're just going to have to take apart a certain way. We're going to take this apart. I'm warning you all, this thing is gross. Just look at this. Oh god, okay. Okay. Alright. Okay. Yeah, this is nasty enough to the point where, as you can see, this rumbler motor thing is sticking to this. Oh god, that's just gross. That is gross. Okay. Uh, as you can see, it looks like I, I don't even know I think that's a combination of dirt and nastiness and this was probably in a smoker's household before so uh, I, I'll put in some up close shots of it as well too but first off what you want to do is however you are doing this you want to make sure that you take the actual board out and don't get that wet uh, if you really want to clean the board uh, normally I do that, just took that off. Normally I do that, I will clean the board and everything, but I'll normally clean it real well with rubbing alcohol and such, because you don't want water touching that. And as you all can see, I'm going to show you all this right here, see if it zooms in or not. Well, not zooms in, but if it focuses. 
All right, so I'm showing you all this up close, but as you can see with the board, that black mark right there, that black circular mark, uh, that is dirt and all that. And as you can see, it's kind of on the controller itself, or well, the board itself, but it's kind of sticky too. All right, yeah, this is definitely going to get cleaned. Most of the time, I really don't have to clean these, but as you can see, this one's going to need a nice cleaning as well. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do the bonus clean on there too. But you know what, for now, we're just going to pop these off, put everything to the side. All right, and I said I would show you all the controller, but as you can see right here, that is the part that was all nastied out on the board itself but yeah these are just like as you can see this is just like the sides where you're going to be putting your hands and all that you don't want your hands all over that and if your hands are that nasty um man, man you, you need to wash your hands before you touch your controllers if th if this is normal for you <laughs> but uh as you can see we have that nastiness going on i'll even show the bottom of the controller here we have just more blackness brownness all around so that's why i, I like to spend the extra like 20 minutes or so cleaning up my controllers and everything but anyways we have all these individual plastic parts here now first off what you want to do as well as getting rid of the pcb board and all that you just want to pop off any rubbering here and if you want to you could always get like new pads and such uh, although these pads are still usable so I'm just gonna keep them on the side with everything else and then you want to make sure that you don't lose the buttons so the buttons that is why I would have the cup right here and I would just put all the buttons inside of them and I don't want them getting lost like that one almost did and got the start button here. It looks like I have everything there. Uh, only thing I need to pop off is just this right here, which I do need a really small screwdriver, so I'm gonna get that real quick. All right, so now that we have those two screws off, we can go ahead and pop this, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and throw that in with the buttons and throw this in with the buttons too. And as you can see, more brown nastiness all around there. So uh, now that we have all that, first off, what I wanna do is I just wanna soak these in rubbing alcohol. So I'm just going to dump a whole bunch of rubbing alcohol in here. To pretty much submerge these nasty things. All right, now that those are all submerged, we should be good. So we can just go ahead, put these to the side, and now we're gonna start the actual cleaning process right here. So normally, uh, I got the top and bottom of the controller right here, and then, uh, you know, the two side bezels and everything as well. Uh, normally, what I'm gonna start doing, just go ahead, soap up everything, just try and get rid of all that stuff. And for anyone that thinks this might be bad, th this is my logic. One, it's plastic, and two, if these controllers can survive getting slammed around and dropped and bitten and everything, uh, they can survive some soap and water. I think that's going to be fine. As long as you're not soaping up and watering your PCB board, you're going to be fine. But anyways, let's just go ahead and get this nice and flooded and everything. I'm just going to throw this in here too. All right, so as you can see right here, they're already looking a decent amount better. Uh, normally, just when you get the soap on there and everything, what I do is I'll just, you know, kind of like rub it in the controller in a general area uh, just to make sure everything's cleaned up. But for the more finer points, like, y you see how back and start are kind of etched out in brownness? Yeah, that brownness isn't supposed to be there. And also, there's the nastiness inside of those holes, which is a bit harder to take care of. But normally what I do just as a general thing, I just do what I showed you and then just kind of pretend you're brushing your teeth, I guess. And normally what I do is I just take the actual toothbrush itself, put the soap on there, and then kind of just start going in and cleaning the finer points of the controller. And I'm not sure how well you can see this, but if you can notice on there, uh, you don't even need that much force. I mean, you can really force if you want to, but it's not gonna damage the controller. I've just noticed it really doesn't do anything. Uh, but if you just kind of go lightly on everything, it starts getting out all that nasty dirt and grime and all that good stuff. So the only thing that would be a bit hard to get in are these button controls right here. Uh, but aside from that, you know, you can get into these circular areas real easily and everything like that. Uh, one thing you really wanna get as well is just the sides right here just the parts where you're gonna be gripping everything I'm just gonna keep the water running there yeah I know I'm wasting water but hey you know what it's included in the rents <laughs> but yeah normally what I'm gonna do I just uh, go in kind of go over all the sides all that good stuff as I said 
Uh, you, you can be as generous as you want, want to with the soap and water and everything. It's really not going to matter. Uh, but yeah, just make sure you go ahead and get everything you can. All right, so now that we have all our stuff cleaned up pretty well, as you can see, it's looking a lot better than before. And it's actually squeaking now because it's so clean. Uh, you're really not going to fix up, you know, some discoloration and all that with this, but hey, at least it cleans up the controller. You might be asking, Mario, how the hell was it so dirty? How is my controller so nasty? Well, hey, that's what happens when you use these things for a few years and it just collects everything that you touch. So, uh, the only thing I really do now is I clean out these little holes and I save these for last normally uh, while everything's still in the sink, but I just dropped a Q-tip there. But what I do normally is I just take Q-tips and uh, while everything is still wet, I just go in and clean everything here, just on the inside now. Uh, I've already done this on uh, two of the holes, but I need to do it on the other two. Um, so as you can see, I just kind of go in and I just kind of go up and down on this, kind of all around. And clean it up so that hole should be fine and uh, there's just like all this gunk on here that you just want to get out and everything so you can do however you want I mean at the end uh, the end result is hopefully going to be the same where your controller is going to be a lot cleaner but hey we just want to get it as clean as we can so with these uh, the, the common buttons are really going to be everything except for the guide button because the guide button is easy to clean up and uh, all these holes here you can easily clean up with a toothbrush so that was fine although these little holes you really can't jam a toothbrush in there unless yeah even if it's like maybe if it's like a baby toothbrush you can if you have one of those laying around but no if it's like any other toothbrush you're not going to be able to get it inside so uh, all you need to do is really, as I said, just go in, make sure everything's good, and then do the same thing on all the buttons here. And you know what? Once we're done with that, we can go ahead and move on to the next part. All right, so I'm going to be honest. Some people might be asking at this point, well, great, you know, all the controllers are all wet and everything. Just the piece are wet. What do I do? Well, now you need to dry them. So they do take a bit to dry. Uh, I'll be honest. I put them in my dish strainer right here, just like there's some dishes. It's just plastic, so it's going to be there. Also, I was thinking of this, and honestly, I don't have a wa not a washing machine. I don't have a dishwasher to try. But really, um, if you don't want to do that, I don't know how deep of a clean you would get, but I bet they might be shinier. Uh, I don't really see an issue with taking all the plastic parts and putting them in a dishwasher. The only thing is I advise that you do not dry them in there. Just run, you know, the wet cycles and everything and just do like warm water at best. You don't want to have it too hot and you don't want to have them air dried because then you might mess up the plastic and everything from all the heat. So I really don't recommend that part. But you know, if you're just going to be cleaning them with cold or warm water, I really don't see an issue with that. I've seen people do it with game console cases before. I would try it if I had a dishwasher on me, but unfortunately I'm not equipped with one here. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the buttons here. All right, so now that we have the buttons and everything here, uh, normally what I do, I have them in this cup. Uh, you know, if you're not going to be using this wa this uh, rubbing alcohol again or anything, uh, you could just go ahead and pour it out. And that's why... I like having this right here, just this little strainer, because I can just pour them out and I don't have to worry about the buttons, you know, getting lost in the plumbing or anything like that. Because trust me, it sucks when you lose a button. I almost lost that one start button, but I found it later. So one thing is, once you get these out of the rubbing alcohol bath, when they've been in there for at least 10 minutes or so, there is some grime on them and everything. And I'm using my left hand because I actually cut my right thumb a few nights ago. Um, but... There is going to be some grime on them, but really you can just kind of rub it off almost, which is really easy to do. So normally I'll just go in and kind of rub those off all the buttons and everything, make sure they're all clean and whatnot. Uh, and then, you know, you could just do the same thing, really just make sure you wash them off with water and everything. If you want to, you could use some soap and whatnot. Uh, but the buttons, you're going to want to make sure they're really dry before they go into a controller and everything. So uh, once you kind of, you know, wipe off that, excess nastiness and everything then you can go ahead clean them up and then you could use you know the uh, toothbrush especially for like the uh, the start buttons and any buttons with indentions and such so we're going to go ahead and do that Alright, so normally with anything with grooves and such like this, I like to just go in, clean it, 
I do have a little bit of soap on this, but I just like to go in and clean it, make sure everything is good to go and everything is nice and clean. Uh, with all these buttons as well, uh, just make sure, you know, you kind of brush them off and everything. Uh, I'll probably do a little bit of a, another once over uh, off camera here too. But uh, then really with the buttons with indentions, like the start and select buttons on this controller, you kind of just want to do a brushing motion just to get, you know, any dirt that might be inside that indention out of there because uh, as you can see like right here, this one, uh, we have some dirt there. And as you can see, just a few brushes and it's all gone. <laughs> That's really all there is to it. So as you can see, that button looks, you know, good as new, thankfully. So we have that, then anything else, you can just make sure to once over and whatnot. And then normally when I'm drying these things, I just like to make sure, you know, they dry with water, not just, you know, straight alcohol and whatnot, because the alcohol will really help, you know, kill all the germs, clean them off and everything, but it's not going to get all that grime off. You're going to have to get the grime yourself off of there. All right, and once that's done, uh, normally then you can just take these and on my dish strainer on the side, I have an area that I have for, uh, you know, the silverware and all that. I just normally put them in there, really. Um, so you can just do that. Also, if you don't have a dish strainer or anything, uh, you can just lay down a towel and keep everything on there. Just make sure no one kicks it and whatnot. So we're going to go ahead and set these to dry. All right, now there's a few more parts to go. Now right here with the rubbering and such, uh, normally what you can do with this, uh, I used to use rubbing alcohol on these, but I've been told, you know, rubbing alcohol isn't really the best thing for rubber, which I can see how. So normally, I will just like go in and clean these up a little bit just with you know some lukewarm water or so as you can see here and uh, you just want to be real careful because I actually had um, an older Nintendo controller that I was cleaning up and uh, on the older controllers these little pads right here are a lot more sensitive so they can rip off a lot easier but on newer controllers uh, they, they're a lot more durable and such thankfully so as long as you, I know you kind of just want to like press everything down and all that. If there's anything you need to rub, you can rub it. But uh, just make sure you know you're not like ripping anything off and whatnot. So all that stuff is cleaned off. We can keep that to the side. And then just kind of do the same thing with this one as well. Uh, I'll move it over here. But the rubber here didn't even need that much cleanliness like it's even squeaking now because it's so clean but it really just needs you know like a once over and right now I'm just observing it just to make sure you know none of these you know button press little pads popped off or anything but it looks like everything is good so we're just gonna go ahead and set these to the side to dry uh, then what I have right here for the screws and all that because the screws are kind of nasty as well really you could treat these the same as the buttons as well so what I'm just gonna do I'm gonna put them in a rubbing alcohol bath it's like a little tiny rubbing alcohol bath. In case anyone's wondering what this is, this is just like a Gatorade cap. So just going to go ahead, put that on the side there. And then with the uh, analog nubs right here, uh, I just kind of do the same thing really, where uh, even if you want to with these, you could use some rubbing alcohol on them. There's nothing really too bad about it. Only thing is I'm just a bit iffy with that due to the fact that... Uh, these are also rubber as well, so you just might want to be careful with that, but you can always, you know, douse them in soap and everything, make sure they're all cleaned up and whatnot. So as you can see, like what I'm doing right here, I'm not sure, I, I thought I just like cut off a little part right there, but I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I just want to go in, clean that up, and then do the same thing with this one. And just make sure you get into all the crevices and everything. And these, you know, uh, normally I really don't mess with these too much just because I normally replace these. In case you all don't know, I do preference, you know, the uh, for the 360 controller, I do like the um, Sony analog type, the PlayStation type analog sticks on them. So I have like, you know, a few packs of them I replace them with. But uh, this one, you know what, I'm just going to keep stock just for whatever reason. So uh, these are worn down, but they're not terrible. So, once they're cleaned up and everything, you could just go ahead and dry these off with the buttons as well and you'll be fine.
Alright, so as you can see, I now have the PCB here, finally, and uh, normally I don't have to take off the um, triggers or anything like that, uh, but these are going to need some cleaning, so normally I wait to do those last, and rarely do I have to do PCBs, because normally the PCBs are alright, but this one is nasty, so normally what I do, I just have, you know, some rubbing alcohol on hand, and I just start going in, and I just start cleaning the PCB all around here, and just make sure, you know, the circuit board is all nice and and clean. Uh, I'm putting this on top. I'm still working in my sink, but I just put a uh, little pizza pan here, but I put it underneath just so I can actually work here in a dry environment. And as you can see right here, it's already picking up nastiness and everything. So you really just want to, you might have to go through a few Q-tips and whatnot, depending on what controller you're going to be messing with. But hey, you know what? This will help out. And I just don't want to see, you know, this nasty black residue all around here. So that's why I'm kind of going in with this. <laughs> all right, after finally getting some decent work done on this, I cleaned up the, you know, the top of it pretty well. I cleaned up the back a little bit. I mean, there was black stuff on the back, too. I don't know how it got on this. Uh, but normally with the triggers, that's really the last thing I want to hit. I did clean the uh, little motors here. All I did was really run some Q-tips around them and everything and uh, just made sure everything was cleaned off. And I put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on here. There's rubber on here, but it's not going to be too bad. The reason why I don't really advise too much with rubber is, uh, well, uh, rubbing alcohol with rubber is just due to the fact that uh, from what I've seen, from what I've been told, um, it does not deteriorate, but it, I, it might deteriorate, but it also uh, dries out the rubber as well. So if it's something that really relies on it, for example, you know, the rubbers underneath the buttons and everything on your controller, I really don't recommend cleaning those with rubbing alcohol. Um, but what I do here uh, with the triggers and everything, you can kind of just really do the same thing. And I was doing it on here, but uh, just take a Q-tip, kind of go around, clean up all the stuff. And since these are like really smooth plastic, uh, any gunk on here comes off real easily. So I already cleaned this one off a little bit, but normally what I do, sorry, I had that off camera here, but normally what I do here is uh, I just go in to the little crevices and everything as well. And you know, make sure everything is cleaned up there so that when you press down the trigger and whatnot, it actually, you know, presses down. It doesn't stick or anything of the sort. So as I said, just go in, just clean it up. And if you need to be generous with rubbing alcohol, you definitely can. There's also a law of this that you can just, you know, physically rub off. But then with the actual indentions here, normally I do this last just because the uh, Q, uh, not the Q-tip, the um, toothbrush here isn't really wet it's just a little bit damp and I'll go ahead and just like dry it off a little bit too uh, and I just like to have it you know a little bit dry just because we're gonna be really close to the PCB here what I do is I just do you know the same type of brushing motion here and as you can see it's really getting that off really well so we're not gonna have any more dirt inside of that and the left trigger icon looks pretty clean now from what I see. So we're just going to do the same thing right here. And you really don't have to like dig in with your brush or anything as I said because that's going to be kind of useless. But just kind of uh, do it with the tips of the brush really. And just kind of do a small brushing motion like this. Sorry if that's a bit annoying, and also sorry for the informality of this tutorial, but this just kind of something I felt like doing, and I didn't figure it was going to be, you know, a real big professional tutorial of any kind, so just felt like doing this here for you all, a little bit of a freestyle tutorial, I guess you all can say. But once you have that, you can go on to the actual triggers themselves, clean that up, clean up everything around here too, and... It looks pretty clean now. So normally with this, what I do is I'm just gonna go off camera, but I normally just clean the, uh, the triggers up here with a towel as well. And as you can see, everything looks a lot better on here. So uh, everything's just nice there and I'm just double checking, but yeah, I don't see any black or brownness on there. The triggers are responsive. The sides look okay in case you look on them. Uh, and you should be good to go. So now that we have everything clean, uh, your PCB should be pretty clean by now. But really, I'm just going to put this to the side here. Uh, you just want to make sure everything is to the side and drying like it is over here. 
So as you can see, I have all my stuff drying here. I have the buttons on the side, and then I have the rubber just like underneath. I'll just go ahead and put it to the side here, and that fell off. <laughs> it's a circular one that's giving me issues. But anyways, all that's over here. Uh, really, all you need to do is uh, just set these out. It could be a few hours or so. I normally just leave these out all night, but make sure everything is dried. Once it's dry, if there's anything in the morning or uh, just later in the day whenever you're doing this that is still a little bit wet, you might want to go in and just make sure it's all dry, so use a towel and whatnot. But aside from that, once it's all dry, uh, just you know work backwards, put everything together, and you should be good to go. So I'm just gonna show you know the controller clean and everything after this, but you know this is the end for me. So this is Mr. Mario signing off. There, <laughs> thanks. Thank you for watching, everyone, and uh, hope this helped you all out. Oh, and by the way, last thing I forgot to talk about with the screws, just do the same thing. We have them right here. Just do the same thing. Just wash them off with a little bit of water and whatnot, and then set them out to dry. Anyways, that's about it. Later, everyone.